you have much dealings with the Ultimate Warrior when you were working there? Um, I had dealings with everybody, and I got along with Jim very, very well. I got I don't I got along with everybody. I, I think that's part of why I had longevity in the, in the, the the executive management side because I had been a talent. So when I talked to somebody, I was always talking to someone that I knew how to approach them because I'd walked a mile in their shoes. Knew a little bit about their personality and what I could say and not say and to, to, uh, to be able to do business with that person. But Jim was uh, very intense uh, and it was like at TV we had, we had to do program, we had to do promos where we had these uh, soundproof boxes and they would go in there and they would do sound bites without being specific to the town. And back in those days, Sean Mooney would do the event center and he would say, the ultimate warrior is going to face Georgie Animal Steel or whatever he'd say, and here's what warrior had to say. And it would be like a 50 second clip. And the warrior was always, you know, out somewhere where people, what the hell was he talking about? But that was the warrior. That was part of his appeal. And he would have to be made up and to get him to, and I would come with him at TV and say, Jim, you need to do your thing. Nah, I got, I'm working on my match. Hold on. And then he would push it back, push it back, push it back, where all of a sudden it's time for his match. He'd come back, his makeup is all run, I gotta get a shower. And Vince, my orders were, I don't leave the building till they're done. So I would get with Jim and I said, Jim, I asked you, and I, I respect that, you know, your time and space with what your priorities are, but my orders are we do not leave the building until this is done. So now you have put it off till now it's your match. Now looking at your makeup, take your shower, reapply your makeup. We're going to be here together until they're done. And then after that, uh, he realized when I told him that it had to be done, that that was the alternative. And he didn't want to be there until 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning. And I, But I did it in a professional way. Had a great relationship with him. And then he, after he left, there was a lawsuit where he tried to get the rights to the name Ultimate Warrior. Because he, he had had it before. And he was there was a lawsuit with the WWE and they were going to have... Um, and I wasn't working with them any longer, and, I, and we, we were going to have depositions with Jerry McDivitt. Jim calls me from Phoenix, and he said, uh, there's a lawsuit, and he said, they're basically trying to say that I was not a main event talent, the, trying to demean his professional credibility, that he didn't have any rights to claim to the name, and he said, you know, your opinion would help me greatly. And I said, you are a main event attraction. And under oath, I would say so. I'm not working for them anymore, but I don't want to burn any bridges. So I said, what you need to do is you need to subpoena me to appear. I'm not appearing as a voluntary witness on your behalf. You subpoena me. And they know that I'm being subpoenaed by you to appear. I'm not appearing as a witness for you. And then when I'm asked under oath that question, you know in advance what my answer is going to be. And it's, I guess, a way of bolstering your case. And that's what happened. 